All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to welcome back David Brock, who is up in uh, Northern California. How are you doing, David? Good, good. It's great to be back on. Yeah, and David is a long-term sales consultant and author of the Sales Management Survival Guide, Lessons from Sales Frontlines. And David, here's an interesting one, right? In Here we are in 2024, right? And people that I speak to still, there's still some of the issues that face them are, number one, it's really hard to find good salespeople. I hear that all the time. It's really hard to find good salespeople. And the second one is it's really hard to get my existing salespeople, a lot of them to perform at a higher level. And therefore the combination of it being hard to recruit and hard to get uh, and hard to get performance leaves people often like making the sacrifice of accepting lower performance just to have warm bodies in place. Well, unfortunately, I mean, when you see a lot of the data that's come out over the last uh, uh, three, four months, and all you see data that's just shocking. It's you see win rates down somewhere around the uh, 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 fifteen to twenty percent. You see percent of people making or exceeding quota less than forty percent, and you see just data point after data point of of just you know declines in performance uh, and shockingly so. And and it, it's it's. To me, it is, you know, I often, when I get into conversations with people like this, on things like this, I say I used to fire people when their win rates got less than 30%. Right. Um, and also, it's it's amazing to me to see these data points, and it's amazing to me not to see um, panic um, mm. uh, in the sales profession mm. about what's happening, why are these, these, why is the data, you know, showing such terrible performance, why do we seem to accept it? Um, and and very few people are asking, what do we do about it? Yeah. So what are some of the what are some of the reasons do you think why this has you know deteriorated? Uh, I mean, obviously, the knock-on effect of this or or a, a corollary to this is obviously sales leadership and sales management uh, yeah. you know performing at their highest level. But what do you think are some of the reasons why things are, are going in the wrong direction. I, I think it's kind of a combination of things that um, that you know any kind of taken individually probably doesn't have a huge impact, but taken collectively, I think uh, we start seeing some massive impacts. You know, you see a, a huge amount of I think residual effects from you know COVID and mm -hmm. and work from home and things like that. I think you see a lot of burnout um mm -hmm. you know as we look at a lot of particularly in SaaS sector uh, a lot of kind of the volume velocity yeah. kind of uh, uh management methodologies where people are simply exhausted with making you know how many thousand emails can i send out a day and now i can use chat gpt to uh, double triple or, or whatever that uh how many phone calls am i going to make how many meetings do i have so you start seeing you know, a lot of uh, of kind of just burnout and exhaustion. At the same time, we also have seen the economy where we've seen, um, uh, well, it's kind of a combination of things. We saw this growth regardless of cost in SaaS and, and slightly less so in some of the other sectors. And then we see the economy coming in where investors now are starting to say, we expect you people to show profits. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot of layoffs, yeah. uh, whether it's the business model in SaaS, whether it is just pure economy and those kinds of things. So, you know, you start seeing this, you know, company cultures are deteriorating and you see you know, people, you know, aren't as excited about work and they aren't as excited about mm -hmm. selling. So, again, again, I think if you saw we've been through bad economies before and not seen this, we mm -hmm. haven't been through anything like like COVID before. But but, I, you know, I think that's that's not the, the sole issue. But we see this mm -hmm. composite of things combining yeah. people are just burned out and and, you know, are just kind of doing the job. 
Yeah, yeah. You know what's a, what's really interesting about what you were just what you were just saying there is, um, you know, is is this is this burnout and and people feeling like they're overwhelmed and and there's too much and and I I think also. Um, you know, we had the whole inbound movement and stuff like that. And we had a lot of things we're sending mixed messages to salespeople, I think. But I think you're right about the the burnout, because while we have made it easier to be able to do things at volume, um, it hasn't had the results that we've expected because now everybody is at volume. And so everybody's on the receiving end of all these messages and prospecting and all of this. And there's so much noise out there that I feel it really takes a, it really takes a, 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 a different type of maybe more, you know, a different type of salesperson nowadays to be able to cut through that noise intelligently. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to an executive several months ago and they're talking about this outbound marketing program that they're doing. And I really respect the executive and, and, and their company. And I said, send me samples of what, what you've done. And their outbound was incredibly well done. It was incredibly personalized, not just to, to the individual, to the company and to the situation and things like that. And they sent out, uh, I think somewhere around a thousand and they had something like two or three opens. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened is, is they decided to call the people that uh, the other 997 uh, uh, and they got in touch with several hundred of them and said, did you see this in your email? And uh, virtually all of them said, I didn't see this in my email. Had I seen this, I would have been interested. And mm. so what we, we figured had happened is in all the noise of everybody pushing out tons of stuff every day, even the good stuff gets hidden away. So yeah. you, you, you start saying, how do I stand out? And so everybody's trying to experiment with different things. And again, we have the tremendous pressure for numbers, activity, and so on. So it's just really probably one of the toughest times I've seen in selling, again, not, I think, because of any one factor, mm -hmm. but I think because of all these things piling up on each other. Yeah. And I think one of the one of the other things that we're seeing, uh, David, and I think, um, and this may be COVID, it may just be the way things have progressed, but we, we're just seeing a different kind of uh, uh, an attitude out there in terms of it, it, sometimes you can get into sales cycles and then people kind of go silent or cold on you and uh, in a way, and it's hard to get follow-ups and stuff. And people are kind of less inclined to reply or to even give you an update than they used to. And it's it's become very, very difficult for salespeople because they're now dealing with this, this culture of where people can f feel fine by just going ghosting you, I guess, is the, the word they use. Well, it's it's kind of, you know, it, it's kind of both, you know, how do you stand out in the volumes and then uh, how do you stand out separately from that? Yeah. And, you know, and especially in, and we've all seen the Gartner data that shows, I think now it shows 83% of customers prefer to do, a, a prefer a rep-free buying experience, even though they may have higher regret after they make the purchase. Mm -hmm. So you have this thing of, we aren't reaching customers effectively. Customers don't want to talk to us. They prefer getting their, their answers digitally or mm -hmm. minimize rep involvement. So you have this kind of vicious cycle going on and you figure out how do we break through it? And I think there are ways of breaking through it. Um, and we're seeing a lot of our, 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 our clients do that. I think one of the other things too is the short tenure, you know, we're seeing data now that says tenure for salespeople and um, and managers is somewhere between 11 and 18 months. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of just, you'd run the math and say, well, gee, it's probably six months onboarding. It's probably a few months for fairly simple things to build a pipeline. And you have things that are, you know, six months to nine months to 12 months sales cycles. And you start looking at it and saying the math doesn't add up. And at the leadership stage, you see the same thing as you bring a new manager in, that manager immediately wants to change and fix things, so puts their programs in place. 
Uh, they last for about uh, 18 months. Then they go someplace else and a new manager comes in. And so the people are, are just hit with all this change from all sorts of sides. And they just keep their heads down. Mm -hmm. uh, just more for security than anything else, or they're looking for their own new jobs. So yeah. it's, it's, again, this kind of positive different things that make it very tough. You know, I think how do you start saying, well, how do we get out of it? Yeah. Um, and I think I think it's a few things. One is, is and I was spending a, a lot of time with a, a very senior executive last week talking about culture. Um, and one of the things that we've started seeing in our own practice is the consistent high performing organizations that we work with have a very strong and very distinctive culture. And then along with that, uh, they actually tend to have much higher tenures than every, uh, other people that we see. And so I think if we're going to start breaking out of that, the, uh, the conundrum that we're in, I think part of it is building a strong culture where people feel heard and valued and where we're kind of in, in this together for a shared purpose to try and do these things. So I think when I talk to a lot of people, they, they seem, even though they're part of large organizations, they seem kind of alone. Yeah, yeah. And and I think on top of that, David, you've got you've got another you've got another dynamic coming into play with that as well. Is that, I mean, while sales per people have often been uh, you know distributed and not in you know the central office and all of that across, but more and more as organizations are geographically dispersed and that you know you have that sense of people being out there on their own and perhaps sales leaders haven't be haven't figured out the best way of being able to communicate and coach and mentor you know the folks who are so geographically dispersed well we, we we've kind of lost track of how human everything we do is yeah. is is people value association and however many zoom meetings we get on and all there's there's a lot lacking in that so is is you know within organization people value getting together uh, every once in a while, uh, you know, it, it's intensely human from a customer point of view. People, uh, you know, want to be heard and recognized by the people that are selling to them. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's this this doing things remotely, doing things at high velocity, doing things where we don't recognize the the humanity of what we're trying to do. Uh, I think all, all contributes to, you know, low engagement and low tenure and low satisfaction within companies mm -hmm. uh, and low performance, consequently. And then, you know, cu customers uh, increasingly failing at what they do, needing help, but not, not wanting the help we try to give them uh, mm -hmm. and so on. So, again, you see all these things kind of piling up on each other, yeah. which creates some alarm. Yeah, because it's um because like you mentioned, there is the the companies who've got a, a strong culture, a strong uh, and a strong culture of accountability and maybe performance and all of that, and and a supportive culture, a culture of uh, of performance improvement. Those are those are the ones that that can really stand out. But that takes that takes real leadership to say we're going to have a results driven, accountable culture, but we're also going to give you all the tools and support needed to be successful that that ta that takes a commitment on behalf of the company absolutely it does and, and it, it's driven and, and kind of lived by the leaders all the time uh you know but then you start looking at it how do we build and sustain that culture if average tenure of our leaders is 18 months mm -hmm. and also that's why when we do a lot of our research work and what we're seeing is those high performing companies have very strong cultures and aligned with that are very, very strong tenure. Uh, if I look at, at, you know, some of the clients we work with, I mean, I, you know, one of our clients is a very, very large professional services company. And I look at the, the sales side of it. Uh, managers have been there 10, 11, 12 years. Salespeople have been there, you know, on average, seven to nine years so you start seeing that you can build depth you can build expertise and you can build knowledge with that kind of thing another client is a semiconductor company uh, they're one of the highest performing in their segment 
and they have tenure of you know people in 15 20 years um uh and and again the depth of experience and knowledge and and all that these people bring in and people stay because it's a great culture they feel heard they feel valued they're accomplishing things together and then you kind of see you know there's this culture this tenure and then their performance and they're doing far better than uh all their competitors or people in near markets yeah and and isn't that the isn't that the uh that's always the the paradox of of recruiting salespeople, is it isn't it because the best salespeople out there generally aren't on the market. And if they're in organizations like the one that you referenced to, they're not likely to be yeah. interested. So it's a kind of one of those things where you have to look at your, as well as looking out there trying to find the best salespeople, you also got to ask yourself, why would the best salespeople come here and why would they stay here? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, so again, a lot of us are in con conundrums, but I think, I think you can start that. And I think we see, you know, in startup, some startup companies we work with, people building very strong value systems, very strong cultures. And even though they're fairly young companies, you start to see that kind of stability. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I, I, I keep using this term, people want to feel heard and valued. Mm -hmm. And so they want to be part of something. And again, you look at this, you look at all the data, you look at some of the things in going on in society right now. I think what we see in sales and business is a microcosm of what we see um, in in society. And, and people are, are, are feeling very polarized and very mm -hmm. isolated and very separate. So uh, it's, it's an, a very interesting challenge. But again, I think you start uh, with leaders in a company, you start doing it, you know, being very focused on creating companies uh, with strong cultures and keep reinforcing that. And it, it's amazing. I, it doesn't take that long to start seeing the early results. It takes a long time to build and sustain mm -hmm. those results, but it doesn't take that long to start seeing the results. People are smart. People get it. Um, and and so and they're willing to give others i think a chance yeah no i i i i agree and i think it is that whole uh, intentionality if you like is like looking at it and say okay we're not going to allow cuz let's face it like a lot of cultures just develop organically and they tend to reflect you know who the founder the ceo or the senior management but actually being intentional and, and saying no we're going to build this culture and we're going to live it and that that take that that takes a, a again as we said that takes a commitment but like you said is like when you have that then you have people who understand who they're working for why they're working for what what the product or service does and then they can become uh enthusiastic about it and 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 passionate about it because i think that's the other thing that really stands out today it's rare to find people who are really really passionate about what they're selling and you get a lot of people who are kind of reticent and almost apologetic about what they're selling yeah i, I think it's i think you hit on it i think the key thing there is the intentionality i, I was talking to uh, a colleague in europe uh last thursday and he was talking about a, a particular client that he had where it was a founder owned company the founder had started with a very strong, very distinct, very positive culture mm -hmm. and started building the company. And the company had been very successful for a number of years. And then he kind of stepped back and he stopped and nobody in the company, none of the senior leaders was reinforcing this culture that he, the founder had originally built. Uh, and all of a sudden the culture just started disappearing. And the performance started going down because there, you know, the culture was defined by who is there and what they were doing. And, you know, it was changing so often it wasn't being reinforced mm -hmm. um, and so on that that you could see a, a real deterioration from what the founder had started to where the company was now. And, and we were, I was talking to this colleague about how do you rebuild it and how long does it take? So, yeah.
Yeah, no, that, and that's a really interesting point you make there because, yeah, because as you said earlier, if things aren't reinforced, uh, you know, not just at the yeah. top, but every, every level down there, then we're very good at sort of spotting the uh, initiative du jour and thinking, okay, well, it doesn't seem, nobody seems to be really pushing this. If I just put my head down, as you said earlier, and ignore it, it'll go away eventually and it'll be replaced by some other initiative. <laughs> Well, and that's, you know, and that's so many of these things that we do are initiative du jour and, uh, you know, and we barely start them. Then we have tomorrow's the next one <laughs> and the next one and the next one. And people just get exhausted. It's interesting. I've been doing a series in my blog about I've been concerned with what I see of, of people being very negative about careers in selling. Mm, yeah. Uh, and and you know just not liking it selling was a thing to them is a thing to earn an income and they live their lives someplace else so i started asking the question why do you like selling so much and i went so far i've, I've gotten about uh 75 responses i published yeah. maybe about 40 of them and the the through themes are really interesting is people get into it for the challenge mm for the excitement, for the competition and goal-driven uh, direction, uh, and for serving customers, for helping them. They mm -hmm. expressed it in various ways, but you know they're really driven to, to, to help customers solve their problems. And they found the process of doing that a challenge. And it, it, it's interesting because I have CEOs of multi-billion dollar companies, CROs of multi-billion dollar companies, people around the world. I have individual contributors. I have one person who's been in sales for six months. Mm -hmm. I have another person who's in the university about ready. She's accepted a sales job and she's talking about her vision and the through themes on all of them are consistent. They're just driven by the challenge, the excitement, working with people, helping them out, and 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 the competition that happens. And I don't see that as pervasive as when I started selling. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think unfortunately, there's a lot of negativity around sales. There's a lot of negativity that has been promoted in popular culture, and then in you know urban myths and legends. And people have just developed this whole kind of idea around sales being this you know pushy, sleazy, whatever that we all know that's not true. Um, whereas on the flip side, it is the it is the most entrepreneurial job in an organization normally because you're either you know part yeah. commission full commission or whatever and therefore exactly what you laid out there the challenge the excitement and all of that so we we need to do a better job continually of raising the profile of of sales as a as a profession yeah but i think there's good news from this i see more and more people recognizing this i see more and more people getting frustrated with the state of sales and I start seeing more people starting to do things like, how do we create positive workplaces? How mm. do we create an exciting environment? How do we get people ex excited about what we're doing as an organization, what they can contribute to it and what we can do with customers? Mm. And, and I see, you know, you see a few signs of that. You see the signs of these high performing companies and other companies are starting to see that and copy them. Mm -hmm. and, and that kind of thing. So I think, you know, the pendulum has swung awfully far in one direction. I'm slowly starting to see it swing the other direction, not as fast as I would like, right. but it's starting to swing the yeah. other direction. But at least it's starting to swing in this direction. Absolutely. Yep. Well, listen, David, this has been great. And all David's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm author of the Sales Manager Survival Guide, and, and finally coming out this fall is the, the Sales Executive Survival Guide. Oh, excellent. Uh, I run a, a boutique consulting company called Partners in Excellence, uh, and I blog virtually every day. So you can find me on LinkedIn or uh, at, uh, at our blog site, uh, partnersinexcellenceblog.com. Excellent. And, and maybe you come back when the new book gets published. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and, well, in fact, a lot of the new book is about these issues, about mm. culture, values, leadership and purpose. So excellent. Well, I look forward to that. Well, listen, thanks again, David. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.